Welcome back to the Career Dad Show, and I'm joined today by Arne Terry. Arne, how are you? I am great. Thank you very much for having me on this show. I'm looking forward to this conversation with you. No, not at all. Thank you. And I do have to say that I did I did mess on around a little bit uh, as I got the, the wrong time last week and we had to rearrange. So I really appreciate you coming back and giving me another chance. <laughs> no problem. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> these things happen. Thank Life you. happens. So I'm one of these people where it's meant to be, you know, we're meant to be speaking today at this time. So let's just, you know, oh, we'll, we'll do it. Be that. We'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit because I, yeah, I, I, I'm fascinated by the, this is happening right now when what would have happened, you know, if we'd have talked last week, what could have, what could have happened in both of our respective weeks that would be different? And yes. yeah. Right, we'll, 100%. We'll, 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 on the kind of different level, different conversations. So yeah, I'm, I'm I'm eager and ready read to start this conversation with you. I love that. I love that. So so before before we get into to some super deep and mean, meaningful philosophical stuff, uh, let's let so you you are a blogger and social media kind of guru, I guess. Yeah, I won't go so far as saying guru. It's but okay if someone else calls it you. Yeah, exactly. It's not like someone calls me that. Yeah, that's fine. I, I just call myself um, joking around using the Spider Man theme, you know, your friendly social media guy. Um, so that's why I just go around calling myself, you know, I'm just a friendly social media guy from the Speaks Me Speaks to Me. Um, so, I, you know, I got into that journey um, just by going when we was allowed back in the day to go to, do you remember seminars when you was allowed to meet people? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, was to, you, you was allowed to be close proximity with people. Um, so I used to um, go to quite a few seminars and listen to, you know, famous people talk, you know, Gary Vee being one of them uh, and various other people as well. And went from seminar to seminar and then went to coaching uh, to mentoring and obviously paid for a course and paid for another course and paid for another course. And then I just started learning behind the scenes and mm. to be fair, um, and then just took it from there. And, you know, people thinking, okay, well, what was you doing? Um, for your normal day job, and my normal day job has been a uh, been a recruiter. Um, so my day job, you know, has been a, a headhunter um, while I was doing all this. Um, so there's, I've got a bit of a story to tell about that as well. And um, but you know, why I've come become a social media professional, and why I do my blogging, and why I help others to you know achieve wealth or just have fun um, on yeah. social media. Yeah, and, and, and I love that. And because I was going to say, you've not always been in this space. And when I was reading, you know, when we first started talking and I was reading a little bit about you and I saw that you were working in uh, recruitment consultancy, uh, mm-hmm. which you were doing, you know, you've done for, for a little while now, but you were doing that yeah. in the 2008 recession, which yeah. had a huge impact on you, right? Yeah. Yeah, that, that was interesting. Um, uh, right, okay, wow, well, we're going back there then. <laughs> <laughs> right, get Let's the tissue. Get the tissue, we're going to start crying now. Um, so, yeah, so back then, 2008, as we know, uh, the credit crunch, crunch, the global economic disaster, and um, whatever you want to call it. So, back then, well, 2008. So, just setting the scene, in um, 2005, I purchased a house with my fiance, now wife. Now wife. Um, 2008, 2007 we got married and um, 2008 we had our first born so if you can just you know yeah it was great getting a house marriage first born but thinking about it as an accountant would probably think about whoa account you know that the funds are going to be stacking up or mm. your expenses are going to be stacking up so deposit for your house furnishing the house you know, buy another product for your, for your property, then get married, saving up for that, or get it on a loan as we did, um, and also your honeymoon as well. Then your first bought, all these finances start stacking up. But you, you know, just like with, and we'll get, to, I'm sure we'll get to that conversation, the pandemic, you don't know it's going to happen, you know, around the corner. So we never knew this was going to happen. So come 2008, we're, we're in a great place, we're doing very well in terms of, you know, building up our family empire, and then we get struck by this um, and just to give you a bit of an um, example where I was at with finance wise as well in recruitment back in 2008 um, it was more about <clears throat> having a, a big commission base rather than a salary um, so obviously my mortgage my loans my car payments you know just lifestyle going out enjoying myself was from my commission which paid all that mm-hmm. uh, and obviously when 
the global financial crisis hit. It was a massive disaster. Some may know, some may not know. It was the investment banks that got shaken up pretty pretty hard. And guess who I was sourcing and supplying for? Investment mm-hmm. banks. So one of them in particular being Bear Stern, um, they went bump overnight. And I didn't even realize, to be fair, until um the next day and um, it was next day in the contract yeah the next day in the contractor called me up or whenever i was a contractor called me up or a few contracts called me up and said they've got no jobs to go to and it just had a massive knock on effect which meant that i wasn't earning commission from them they didn't have a job i had nowhere to put them into because guess what the majority of my clients were in the financial um, service um, sector so it, it was very interesting so uh, the first thing that happened was panic um, then probably fear, uh, then confusion, then, you know, uh, what the F <laughs> am I going to yeah. do? Um, so I just, you know, went around like a headless chicken, first of all, thinking, you know, bringing more clients, bringing more people, trying to drum up more business. That wasn't happening because, you know, everyone just went on to kind of lockdown mode in terms of, right, okay, we don't know where we're going to be. Yeah, we're in a good position at the moment, but we don't know where we're going to be in six months and we don't know what's going to happen in six, in nine months. Sounding familiar? <laughs> so, so, um, so this is obviously back in 2008. So my commission started to um, de- deplete and become nothing. So then, what did I do? I did what everyone else was doing. Unfortunately, um, I got a second job. Um, yeah. So I got a second job in Tesco supermarket, which is a big um, supermarket. So I wasn't working on a checkout or till or anything like that. I was working in the warehouse, um, basically bringing in. Um, clothing and um, doing all the mundane stuff and um, but actually there's one bit of good thing i got from that i actually got a suit from um they got a clothing range f and f got a suit a full suit for four pounds <laughs> fifty you know it's it's who you know <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I always, I always like laugh about that still to this day because obviously when you're working for a, you know a company in the back office, yeah. you get certain things, and it was on sale. So I, I saw a suit, it's like wow, four pound fifty for suit pants and a, and a suit jacket. And after that, yeah. so I bought, obviously use that for my recruitment side. Yeah, yeah, when yeah. It's- but, but anyway, so yeah, so it, it, it wasn't all smiles, unfortunately. It was a bit of doom and gloom. So I was doing that for a while. Um, and then, you know, people listening to this um, podcast will be thinking, well, what was you doing? Did I give it recruitment? Did I cut back on recruitment? No, I didn't. I was still working full time in recruitment. Um, but what happened literally on a Thursday evening, I would jump in my car, six, I think, yeah, 6 30, jump in my car. Um, race over to Tesco's for seven o'clock and um, do my five hours on the Thursday night, do the same thing on a Friday night. Bearing in mind, um, I'm young, I'm outgoing, I like to go out, you know, enjoy mm. myself. That wasn't happening at all. That all was stopped straight away. Um, and then I did the same thing on Saturday, whereas, well, I didn't do the same thing Saturday. On the Saturday, I did a 10 hour working day. Right. And on Sunday, I did a five, four or five hour working day. So I was doing that seven days a week. And, um, just under a year. Um, just under and a year. You, and you had a, a, a new, new mom, new, maybe yeah. not a newborn, yeah. but you, you were yeah. a new dad. Yeah, yeah, new dad. Yeah. So yeah. When, so. when are you see, when are you seeing family and yeah, how, how was that? Because well, the answer is, well, you probably weren't. <laughs> how, no, I wasn't. No, how, I wasn't. How, how, what what never, was that yeah. like? Um, well, first of all, there was a uh, guilt. Um, yeah. So emotions came in. So it was obviously guilt, um, not being there as much as I, I should have uh, been there. So I was guilt. Then obviously the missing out. Mm. Um, and I felt sometimes felt like a zombie, as you would when you're working yeah. like in those hours. Um, and then there was obviously frustration. And there was, a, I wouldn't say depression, but it was more... Um, it was just more than missing out. It was more than missing mm. out, and then obviously again, well, not obviously, um, but uh, then there was the the side of um, how should I put it, um, embarrassment, um, because yeah. and then what came and what what I mean by embarrassment is at the time I believed I had to have a nice car, so I had a, an Audi, nearly new Audi A4, two point four, you know, V6 Sport or S line, should say. Uh, I sold that. Um, then got an absolute banger. <laughs> Listen, 
this car was so, and some people may be able to relate um, in the past or currently if, if you're going through financial stress. But trust me, if you're going through financial stress, it will get better. It does. You just need to keep focused and keep the faith. Um, but this car was so bad, the um, electronics on it failed. Right. Um, so the indicators didn't even work. So I remember having people beeping at me when I was like doing a turn. Or sometimes I was, you know, on this one, embarrassment came. I sometimes I put my arm outside and say I'm doing the right hand turn. <laughs> and I didn't even know how to do a left hand turn in the car. Do you left hand turn in the car? You put your arm like that. That's yeah, actually yeah. doing left hand turn. Most yeah. people will know this, but I, I knew this. Yeah, I had no indicators. Yeah. I'm turning left. <laughs> oh, mad. And so uh, I, I just wanted to, because it was a. It was funny when you 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 were trying to find the right word to describe it, and it was almost like you had to, frankly, kind of get over your ego, which yeah. which would be incredibly hard because if you've it's not your fault that you'd been an ex- a successful recruitment consultant that yeah. happened to pay well for investment banks and financial services. Yeah. Why couldn't yeah. you afford nice things yeah. for yourself and yeah. to live a certain way? Yeah. Um, and it's kind of the same with this recession, uh, well, the recession that we're going into now, but with the pandemic. Yeah. It affects every. It doesn't matter what you have. It is affecting everyone. But I'm just wondering, how did you, how did you, and you touched on it there, but how did you feel about having to say, yeah, do you know what? I need, I need the second job. Yeah, you know, you, things that you might have looked at other people for in the past and thought, ooh. Mm. I, I don't know. Uh, well, the, 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 it, it goes back a bit more, and, and I think right. we could be on the subject for quite a while. <laughs> it, it goes back into the day when, when I was a lot younger, when I was like, you know, I'm taking you back to 92, 93, 94 now, when I was when I was in high school. And, you know, mum, um, t- typical uh, mum, my mum um, from Africa, Sierra Leone, um, comes to the UK, you know, traditionally what the um, black African women go into, NHS. So mm. my mum was an NHS worker, low hours, um, so high hours, low paid. Yeah. Um, we was, you know, we was a family that we, we got excited when we, when we knew my mum wasn't going to be working Christmas Day the next year, you know, because she was working constantly. So never had much money. So this goes back into then when, you know, when I was in school, friends had a bit more money than me. But that wasn't that wasn't I wasn't bothered. About that. I would think about other solutions. So my solution was selling sandwiches. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, back in the day, I would sell sandwiches, so I'd be making between five to ten pounds a week on just selling sandwiches. So, it, you know, it's kind of been put into me of having the having a lack, to be fair, and then finding finding a way to get into it. So there's kind of that as well. And then fast forward a bit more, when I first first started into recruitment, I did do a lot of industrial recruitment. So you pick as you pack as you fault as truck drivers, and I had a load of you know I used to work with a load of um, Polish Romanians because then back then the Romanians just came into the EU, so a lot of Romanians came in, into the into the country, and these guys were just hungry, hungry. They were so hungry just to work and so it's kind of like I just had to put my mindset into them yes I did feel sorry for myself a lot Hmm. no I didn't want to sell the car Um, but I just had to change my mindset and just think you know thankful how thankful I am to you know have a house have a wife have a child yeah. um and yeah that and then as I was going through that motion as I said you know that that car was literally shuddering I was driving the electrics didn't work uh, I didn't even finish off the story as well the the speedometer broke as well oh, um so so yeah this was just under under a year as well so I, I had to gauge how fast I was going just by using the looking at my refs uh, in the car this, this is a true story this is a true yeah. story you know um so it, it was and i'm smiling talking now but it, it, it was it wasn't a smiley time it wasn't right. smiling. so it was it was very it was very very tough uh, and i think that's what uh, it, right or wrong that's what um drove me forced me to go down the um the corporate side so much because I had more drive, more determination, corporate, 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 corporate. In hindsight, you know, I probably would have done it differently um, and then started my um, social media journey um, earlier. But I was so focused on getting that six-figure package. Yeah. Uh, I just, you know, blinkers on uh, and I was just doing whatever I could to get there. Yeah, and but that's that's not necessarily a bad thing. I think it's, you know, it's, it's when, as you say, something hits blindsides you that you just so mm. unexpected what what mm. kind of can you do and, yeah. and it's interesting because where 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 you live in manchester uh, manchester yeah so i i um grew up in sheffield and yeah. so i used to and i used to work for um 
like a government funded recruitment agency that yeah. was focused on and this this was 2008 to 2009 so this was yeah I, I basically finished my degree uh went to the states for four months and thought oh i'll find a job when i come back because the market's yeah. great and then you come back <laughs> and the market's not great um so i got i got this job but it was it was working with um you know asylum seekers refugees and trying to yeah. find them jo- and, and also uh with with kind of um british nationals as well and it's it's interesting, you know, when you were talking about, you know, the um, the more like lower skilled workers, and you're talking about, you know, the Mar- Romanians and the Polish, and the thing that I found when I was in that job was that when there were um, there was a couple of Burmese guys, and when they weren't looking for jobs, they were just out, just like picking up litter in the streets, yes. and they're just like, yes. well, we're a part of this community, yes. so we're going to do what we can whilst we're yeah. not able to give back, and yeah. I just think that you know when anyone gives quote foreigners uh, a bad yeah. time i just think you need to meet some of these people because they're bloody yeah. hard working people yeah yeah, yeah. You know, we, we can literally have a separate co- podcast yeah. just on that yeah just the the english versus um the polish and the romanians that I was working with yeah. and you know they, they wasn't showing up for jobs but yes the polish were so i'm yeah. not saying it's, it's, no same it's thing it's blank yeah, for sure. yeah exactly but that's just my experience that yes. i have the my yeah. time back back then um, when when I first started out my recruitment journey, so it was very interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so so you said that you were doing this dual, and you must have been doing. I'm just trying to work it out. You must have been doing sixty, seventy hours a week. Yeah, more than that because my recruitment I was doing uh, recruitment I was doing like ten hours a day minimum. Yeah. So I would do fifty hours a week just in recruitment. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so. <laughs> so. But, but, <laughs> so I'm just, I'm just, what, and so if that went on for a year what pulled you out of that what 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 happened and you started to think this could be good um well the, the thing that pulled me out from that first of all was um uh, my client started to come back to me right. uh, because I was, I was so i was so focused it, it wasn't like oh i found another career or found something different mm. i i basically rolled the wave or went through the storm or, or whatever you want to call it what yeah. knowledge you want to use and um, so you know as that was getting um easing off and i was getting new clients because i went into more of like government-based um clients where you know you, you know your governments your public um sectors they've got a budget they've got to spend that budget or they're going to lose it for next year so i went i changed my um, strategy to work for different um corporations yeah. or a different uh, business um rather than the finance sector i went for other companies as well that i knew would have a budget um so i just changed my strategy to win more clients in and obviously finish the job at um good old tesco um, supermarket and then i literally two things happened uh one as i said i was really focused on climbing the corporate ladder and another thing was i said to myself i don't want to be in that situation again if something like this hit um so i literally tried and tried different things but i was shiny object syndrome where i would try something and put it down you know like you know as you would you you go to trade trading seminar you go, oh yeah i could be a trader you but yeah. actually what's trading and you try it and you think no i don't want to try it then you go into multi-level marketing and you try something else you try something else you know and then i was i was all over the place because i was thinking i was thinking like you know by 2010 i'm gonna be a millionaire i was like yeah. no no you're not <laughs> <laughs> so just stick, stick to your recruitment so I, I climbed up i climbed the ladder and i did i did well um climbing it up and going to different companies and then you know becoming from a from a senior to a principal to a to a, a team lead to a manager uh, to a head of practice um hire a fire a control of pro, um, profit and loss you know all, all that mm-hmm. stuff all that headache that comes with when you climb in a corporate sure. ladder. Um, so yeah, so that that was kind of my recruitment journey. Then um, the thing the thing is as well, obviously, as time goes by, your family expands. So you have another child. So my, my son was born in my daughter was born in two thousand and um, I wasn't getting it right here. Yeah, so daughter was born in two thousand eight. My son was born in um, two thousand and ten. Hmm. Uh, but I was I wasn't learning from the mistakes in terms of. Um, the hours that we're doing. So if, if anyone's listening to this and, you know, and, and you've got a, a job role, which, you know, a, a lot of responsibility, the more, the most responsibility is your family and your children. 
So if anyone's listening to this now is the priority should be on your your wife um, or your um, or your husband, vice versa, and it should be on your children. You know, mm-hmm. forget that job. The work's still going to be there the next day. Um, but I was so focused to do more, be more, climb the ladder. I neglected that. So I was, you know, I was uh, a lot, lot of times I was in the office like, you know, half seven and I wasn't finishing to half seven, eight o'clock mm-hmm. coming home. And then, uh, I, you know, I was the kind of dad that would have my tea by myself, you know, <laughs> eight o'clock, yeah. nine o'clock at night where, you know, everything's been done and I don't see him. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, you know, very, very interesting. So that happened and I was basically just saying to myself, I need to start my own business. I need to start my own business. I need to start my own business. And I taught myself out of it. it. Must have been about a hundred times. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So you know, fast forward it. You know, or should I say, dial it back to two years ago. I did. I sat. I sat at my own uh, international headhunting uh, company recruitment, and then simultaneously, that's when I started to do the um, social media. And um, the the reason why I did that was. For one, I realized I was always hanging out on LinkedIn. So I was doing my social media, I was doing my ad copy, I was you know, doing my adverts, et cetera, et cetera. So I was doing all the social media stuff. I was helping mm-hmm. clients with their social media. I was helping them with talent attraction uh, and talent retention as well, mainly on the talent attraction side, because obviously you're going out to, on user social media to attract, so I was already doing that. Um, so that's when I got the... Um, the bug for seminars and meeting people mm-hmm. and going to masterminds and getting coached uh, and investing my time and money, you know, flying here, flying there, and meeting different people. Um, so, yeah, so I had it in my mind what I was going to do, and that was obviously going to be setting my own company as a recruitment. While I'm doing that, I can fund my social media business or vice versa. And you know what? If I want to have a lion, I can have a lion. If I'm going to go to the dentist, I'm not going to have to ask for permission, permission that I need to go to the dentist. Yeah. If I'm taking my children to school, whatever time I want, I'll take them to school because um, my life um, evolves around literally how quickly I could get the children into. I would always, always do the school run in the morning run, but it was all always the nursery stroke breakfast club. Yeah. So I would literally, I had it literally mapped out in my head. So I'd literally drop uh, my. This was obviously a few years ago. So I dropped my. Um, daughter off at school and then for breakfast club and I'll go the other way and then drop my son off at um, a nursery and looking if the work was on the way so yeah. you know dropping them off at 7 30 in the morning going there going there and then and then when my son came into school and doing the same thing so they, they both go to breakfast club which was great because it's at the same school um but it was always rushed mm. but then when I started my own journey it was like no breakfast club stopped yeah. after school stopped you know i'm going to take him to school i'm going to be that parent in the yard run, which i was running around mm. playing tick with the kids you know and just you know just in, enjoy myself before school happened or, before, or after school happened um, but i'm making this sound um, easy it wasn't easy because obviously when, when you're starting up your, your business and just to put into perspective the role that i left um, was a was a six-figure package role yeah. Uh, so I went from that to earning zero because yeah. once you start your own business, you are you, you don't you've got no guarantee that anything's yeah. going to come in. Yeah, and 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 so I've I've got two two main questions on on that. So what 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 was the kids' reaction to when you'd stopped the Breakfast Club and you were like, I'm doing this now, and and Breakfast Club's kind of over, and you know what what, what do they think? Do you know what? I'm glad. I'm so glad you brought that up. Oh my gosh, I was hurt because my son was like, "Oh, I want, I want to still go to Breakfast Club." Do you know why? Because I had a computer in yeah. Breakfast Club, so he could go on the computer, and he was the best. He was the best at one of the games yeah. uh, in the morning. So I was like, "Oh, I want to still go to Breakfast Club." My daughter was really happy because you know she's been she's a bit lazier um so she she likes she likes to like the lay-ins and stuff like that rather than getting up really early and yeah. um, but my son was like just draw was like oh when can we go back to breakfast club like no you're not going back to breakfast club i'm now taking you to school you don't have to get up early you know we're not like in the car for quarter past seven getting oh, yeah, to school yeah. and rushing rush the me rushing we're literally 
getting into school for whatever time, you know, quarter to, quarter to nine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I thought I was going to be like a you know superhero. I, I, I kind of imagined myself, you know, my, my hands on my hips with a cape behind yeah, my neck. Yeah. The kids come on, Dad, you're great, you're great. No. <laughs> it was like, yeah, oh. kids, kids are, are, are cruel menaces. Because uh, yeah, I, I know when, when pre-pandemic and I used to kind of surprise my son, he's six now, um, and I'd say, oh, uh, I'm, I'm working from home tomorrow so I can take you to school. And he was mm. like, no, nanny's taking me to school. And I'm like, <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. You think you're going to get this big cut? I'm like, yes, Dad, great, yeah. Dad. Sometimes you get it. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. But, um, yeah. but yeah, great, great question. And it was like, you know, but he came around to it. He appreciated it. He yeah, I bet. When I picked him up. Um, and it was great with picking up as them coming running over to you with a school bag in their hands, just yeah. there you go, there's a school bag, or, you know, there's a picture that I've drawn for you, or there's something that I've done, yeah. which I'd, I'd never, never really had to be fair. Yeah. Um, but no, do tell a lie, there was a company that I did work for um, a couple of years ago, uh, prior to me setting my own business, where mm. um, I did have times where I was working from home, yeah. uh, and it was allowed that I could, you know, do that. Not all the time, but I yeah. could do that once in a while. So I did kind of get a taste of it, and that taste of it made me want more of it, if that makes sense. Absolutely. No, absolutely. And and the other question I wanted to ask you was going from that six-figure package to nothing, mm. like to no guarantee. How did you did you have to put save up uh, a lot of savings for that, or did you just did you have this belief based on your experience prior that if yeah. it didn't, if it all went wrong or if it didn't quite work out, you'd just get yeah. another job and it'll be all right. Yeah, yeah, and, th and that was it. I, I had money saved up, but um, I, I, I've never even mentioned this before. I, I did something that was a bit, a bit silly, and I don't advise anyone to do this. Because um, <laughs> at, at that time when I was when I was doing that, um, I'm trying to get make sure the dates are right here. Um, we just got pregnant with our third, who's two and a half now. So she was born in Feb. Um, Feb, uh, gosh, <laughs> it's wrong. 2018, Feb 2018. Yeah. Um, so we literally just thought we'll get pregnant left by a house. So we literally bought bought a bigger house. Um, and I'm not saying it's the right thing or wrong thing to do. Um, but in hindsight, it could have been different because the house that we bought. We could, we could have stayed in our current house and we could have got two other houses on you know, on, on buy to let or maybe right. three um, mm -hmm. because we, we upgraded uh, on, on a house rather than staying where we was because mm -hmm. I, you know, because with the family was growing, I, I wanted the biggest space for him. So we did that. <laughs> so, so yeah, so I think it was like, am I learning my lesson here? I'm sure I am. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so. I did that and then obviously then I started um, my own business shortly after when obviously mm. it was the house. Um, but luckily enough, we, we had money saved up anyway. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, I'm a new business person anyway. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a sales guy. Um, I'm not an account manager um, where I'm waiting for girls to come to me. So mm. I'm, I'm what someone would call a hunter. Yeah. So I was uh, looking for looking for um, my next clients to, to yeah. get I it, guess I guess it's kind of you're 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 doing what you've always done. You're just doing it for you. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. That, and and that's exactly the thing as well. Where when the company I'm working for is never I'm calling from this company. It's Aunt Terry. I'm an international headhunter. You know, this these are the companies I recruited with, or these are the people that you may know of who have been put into these high positions that you may be aware of. So it's never me talking about the company, it was me talking about myself and yeah. um, successes and other business that I've worked with. So there was never that fear um, of getting the people. It was just kind of the uncertainty, uncertainty. Yeah. but that's where I think I do best in, um, not having that comfort zone, having yeah. that, right, okay, right, okay, right, what else are you gonna do now? So so yeah, and, but again, like I say, anyone listen to it, it, it wasn't plain sailing, it wasn't mm -hmm. easy. There was a lot of stress involved, you know, me going through my business plan, making sure everything was going on well, me making you know hundreds of calls a day, um, and just yeah, and just basically drumming up and um, drumming up the business again. Um, while I was doing that simultaneously as well, it, it was better for me because I could plan my day better because mm. I'm taking kids obviously to school, um, and then I had pretty much from 
um, I'd get on like nine ish, just after nine o'clock. So I had to from like nine till uh, three to do my new business, do my calls, do whatever, and then I'd pick the kids up from school again, um, and then do my bit. And then my wife, my wife's working, um, so that's why obviously she she would um, then take over later on. So I would you know cut the tea for the kids, and then my wife would then. Um, um, pick up later on in the afternoon and do what what she had to do with the kids as well. So it, it was great for me because I could set my my agenda meetings, you know, between those times, between the call times of ten and two. But yeah. there was, was there was a, um, a time when I did forget to pick my son up, which was really <laughs> bad. I was I was literally in oh where is it? I was in Cheadle. Um, There's a business park. I can't I've, for the life of me, it's gone gone out my head. But I was in the client meeting. Hmm. Um, more, more of a friend meeting, friend stroke or client meeting. You know, yeah. we've done business together, so it wasn't like an important thing. And we, we, we were speaking, and I literally just looked at. I said, "What's the time?" I literally just jumped up and ran, and I said, "My son has finished school. I need to get home now." <laughs> <laughs> how, how how old was he at this point? Oh, this this is this is recent. This is like um, <laughs> this is like like end of two thousand nineteen. So yeah. some of the son was some was nine. Yeah, uh, some was nine. So luckily enough, I phoned my wife, and she's her work's flexible. Mm. Uh, so um, the, my wife went down and picked him up. So that's the only, that's the only time when I kind of um, you know got lost, <laughs> got lost in the that. moment, but. It was like a business associate friend, and we've got yeah. we had we had a coffee, then we had a chat, we had another coffee, and it was like, oh, do you want to order some food? Yeah, let's order some food. <laughs> I, I didn't even get to eat the food, by the way. Oh I was, no! I got up and ran. Um, but yeah, that that was a blooper from from my side. You know, hold my hands up to that. But lucky enough, though, my wife came to the rescue and um, and picked him up. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. Obviously, you know, fantastic might be the wrong word, but it's funny. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. Funny. That, 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 it's just when your heart sinks and yeah. it's like, oh my gosh, I know I'm not going to get from, um, you know, I don't know if anyone knows the location, but from like Cheadle to Presswich mm. in 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 time, there's yeah. no way I'm going to get there in time. So literally, it's yeah. fun. And she just came to the rescue. She's a bit of a superstar like that. No, that's fantastic. Uh, that is fantastic. Definitely. <laughs> um, what, one thing that I'm really fascinated on is that you've got this recruitment business that you've set up <laughs> but the social media as well yeah so are they what so do you do social media consultancy as as well or or is it more yeah. how recruiters you, you kind of train recruiters on how to be you know social sellers or, or... yeah no honestly i keep them i keep them separate okay. uh, great question so what happened was i'm um, obviously we're speaking in current times now so what happened in um obviously when the when the shutdown um, happened, pandemic happened, is I had let's just say a, a, a couple of pennies um, that disappeared because I had my recruiting business, had people due to start, um, nice. and then all those roles got put on hold. Uh, no, 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 a lot of them got cancelled. In fact, some got put on hold, um, and then it was a case of right, okay, I know at that time it was like when these roles close, I don't really have to work for the rest of the year if they didn't want to. And hmm. um, that's how, um, that's how um, significant the, the money was. Um, but it all disappeared. And, you know, if it's not in the bank, it's not in the bank. Yeah. Um, and that was obviously due to the um, the pandemic. So that disappeared. So what happened in the background, luckily enough, I was doing my social media thing. I didn't have the confidence, you know, back then. So last year was, you know, coaching and teaching family members, friends. Uh, and then... I had a client I was dealing with in, in Dubai, just giving them a bit of information, and they thought, oh, there's, you know, that's me, one of these things, you know, how, do you, how much do you charge? Oh, okay, okay, right, I'll charge, you know, and then you yeah. give them a figure, you don't expect them to, to, to bite on the figure, and they did, so that's why I went, and so that's what I did, so I started consulting, and just only a handful of clients on, like, social media presence, just how, you know, the basic things, setting up a blog, getting um, utilization on a blog, selling a YouTube channel, how to set it up properly, you know, doing it the right way, uh, and then giving them information about, 
why blogging is important, why setting up a YouTube channel is important, you know, how to get um, your um, your following on Instagram, those those basic yeah. things on there as well. So I was, I was basically doing that um, when this hit, and then it was like, right, okay, I need to step up the pace a bit more, right? So what else you what what else what else have you learned? So it's kind of right, what else have you learned? These seminars that you've been to, all these coaching courses that you've been to, mm-hmm. these mentors that you've got, what else have you learned? Right, okay, affiliate marketing, selling other people's products. Right, okay, I'm gonna do that. So I'll start doing that where you obviously you go into Facebook, you find the product and sit up, you find the product, you put an ad out, you know, start your ad out like you know, five a, uh, a day, five pounds a day, and then you start scaling up to maybe ten pounds, maybe twenty pounds a day. You know, you're sending this product around the world, then you may you might make twenty quid in profit, and it goes to thirty quid, and you know, then you're making three hundred pounds a day, four hundred pounds a day, and then that's how I started um, getting the money back, and um, by basically doing that. So just basically by doing affiliate marketing, yeah. uh, but I had a bad experience um, with that, and a lot of people do, um, which is Facebook. Um, on the business management accounts so they shut down your ad accounts and I just got really frustrated with all the um, the legislation you know setting up an account or doing an account without so I was like okay what else can you do what else can you do while that's sorting out what else can you do right okay you can create your um, course on how to dominate social media so that's why that came about so I created my online digital course um, to help people um, dominate social media um, and it just gives them information about like like, like I was coaching and teaching my um, uh, consulting with my clients, um, but then I'm giving it to the masses, giving it to people, obviously at, at a fraction of the cost. Um, so I set that up, and then that's in the internet now. So that's you know playing its yeah. way on YouTube ads, um, money coming in, and then also I've obviously got my blog as well. And um, so I've monetized my blog, which just basically means when you go on blog and you click on a link and you you know, divert to, to Amazon, you purchase something from there and making money from there as well. So, so I literally, the best way to do it is literally me just showing you a hand, not rude hand gestures, but hand gestures like this. So if you think about it, my recruiting business was there at, yeah. when I was doing well. And then my social media business was there, just to, you know, doing a bit bits and pieces. Wasn't really that bothered because my recruiting business was doing well. Yeah. And then as soon as COVID hit, it was like, Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Those hands change. This, 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 this is when I'm going to pivot, and that was the main thing I talk about on on a lot of my stories as well, which was the difference between 2008 and 2020, and um, which is the the knowledge that I've got now. So the knowledge that I've got now is not running and, and doing a part time another a second job. There's nothing wrong with that. If that's what you know, that's what you know. Um, but you know, I've got people, you know, just send me messages on uh, on LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, Twitter, etc. And I just, you know, give them hints and tips and a few hints and tips that I've said is okay. You know, in your house, your flat apartment, what have you got that you've not used? Um, utilize Facebook Marketplace. Mm. Uh, you know, have you got a bike that you've not bothered using? What about clothes? You know, family members, you know, your son, your daughter, your know, shoes, have they grown out of them? Your know, kids have grown out so bloody quick. Yeah. So maybe able to drum up, you know, a couple of hundred quid within a couple of days just doing that. And not only just selling, buying, buying yeah. to sell. So if you're a bit of a geek on whatever it could, you know, it, it could be, I don't know, it could be collectibles. So if, you, if you're seeing something that's been sold and you're like, wow, that's a lot cheaper than it should, it should be, yeah, yeah. buy it, yeah. buy it and then resell it. So that yeah. product, that, that's, that's someone selling for fifty pounds. You may think it's worth one hundred and fifty pounds. So buy it for the fifty, and then sell it for one hundred and fifty. Then you made one hundred pounds within a space of what at the time. So, exactly. so that's that's not what I teach on on my course, but that's kind of the coaching sessions that because I, I do like a free thirty minute coaching session. So I kind of ask them a bit more about the lifestyle, <clears throat> what to do. Um, you know, do you want to? You know, what money do you want to make? A lot of people. I'm bothered about making, you know, ten thousand pounds a month. More, you know, a lot of people are just more bothered about paying the gas, electric, mortgage, or maybe yeah. just a car payment. So it's like, right, okay, if you can do, if you want to do that, I can show you how to do that by way of my course that I do, and you you can get to do that very quickly. Yeah, and I know it's it's, it's so funny because at the start of um, this year, well, before the pandemic, uh, I, I for a bit of fun decided to kick off through Career Dad, what I was calling the twenty twenty flip challenge where you just start with 10 pounds and everyone yeah. just starts with 10 pounds and we just see yeah. at the end of the year who's yeah. who's got the most. We had a little community going and there's this one guy yeah. who kept going into charity shops and buying like 
Henley jackets for three quid and selling them for 70 quid. And like yeah. he was he was bossing yeah. it. And, you know, there was he definitely I think he yeah. was the, the leaderboard at five. He turned his tenor into 500 pounds bef- yeah. from like January to the end of February. You yeah. think that's yeah, it's it's a phenomenal. And what this has forced us to do is be entrepreneurial, think outside yeah. the box, a bit different. And again, let go of our, our ego as well. Yeah. You know, you've got to completely let go of your ego. Like I said, yeah. once that charity shop, have a sniff around. Yeah. See, See what that product says, and then buy. You know, even um, oh gosh, um, was it Oxfam? I can't remember. Anyways, it was a tra- charity shop, but, but they get, like you said, they get um, designer yeah. clothing very heavily, heavily discounted, yeah. heavily discounted, but still expensive. Yeah. Um, to, to the com, to the common, but to no, no yeah. person like me, I would say it's expensive. I don't buy a designer, and yeah. um, but. I would say it was expensive, but there's people out there that would want to buy it, and it's and you could make two, three hundred pounds off a perch, exactly. off that one perch just by just by doing that. So that's what I, I'm saying to people when you know just reach out to me on Instagram, just you know randoms, um, just basis, you know, just think differently. Yeah. But the main thing is you know social media, get your presence out there, um, and you don't know what you're gonna what you're gonna um, or who you're gonna run into, um. I don't think I've told you this. In, in fact, um, hopefully after the, uh, hopefully um, tonight or maybe tomorrow, I've, I've got a, well, I do have a call scheduled. They told me to ring him, uh, an actual billionaire. That I'm wow. Yes, yeah, speaking to, and I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have got that if I didn't learn how to, you know, a bit of the tricks and how to find these people yeah. or where they hang out and literally yeah. WhatsApping each other. Um, nice. It's crazy, yeah, it's crazy. A, a bloody billionaire. So, yeah. and that's what I'm doing. I'm hanging around with um, people who can help me and coach me more, to, so I can deliver better to other people as well. So, um, so that, that that's basically what I'm doing. I'm, you know, I'm skilling up. I'm reading all these books on mindset, on to numbers, on wording, and um, so, you know. Just, just basically get myself better and obviously surround myself with some of the best coaches and mentors out there as well to make sure when I'm delivering a course and when I'm speaking to people, I'm giving them, you know, good information that they can use and then they can utilize that to do better in whatever they want to do as well. Yeah. And and I love what, what you know, what you're talking around there as well is that diversified income stream is, you know, yeah. which, which I think actually, you know, speaking to a lot of the I say kids, I don't mean that in a, in a derogatory way, but, you know, the kind of 16, 17, 18, 19 yeah. year olds, that's yeah. what they know. They're like, yeah. you know, yeah, well, I'll, I'll, I'll be a Tesco delivery driver, but I'll also trade Forex and I'll also yeah. do affiliate yeah. marketing and I'll also do social media. Co- and, and it's funny because I, I kind of look, you know, so my, my day jobs are very corporate, you know, in financial services yeah. and, and I'm kind of, you know, thinking, those type of jobs they're gonna have to cater for the these guys who are entering the job market that might not want to do that job full-time because why would they want to they might only want to do it 15 hours a week because they're spending 30 hours doing three other things yeah absolutely yeah they might be the best talent for it and i think that's gonna you know i'm really interested to see what the corporate world looks like in 10 years time i think it's going to be hugely different from what it is today Yeah, it's going, to, it's going to be, you know, completely turned up on its head. Yeah. And like you said, the, the kid, they are kids. Even when, when you're, you're, even when you're 30, I still believe you're a kid as well. It's, it's, it's just, it's just the way that's, just, uh, with, that could be another conversation. It's just the way society <laughs> throws it on us where, where you're 30, you're old now, you've got to yeah. be doing this, you've got to be doing that. Yeah, you can still be responsible. You still have, your, you can you know, have kids, but you're still a kid. You're still, you're still young, you know, yeah. you're still very young you know people live into the 90s or whatever so exactly. just think of you 30 40 you've still got another 50 years to go and exactly. um, before, before you go to another place um but yeah as you were saying about that you know, there's a lot of more kids now are more aware of what's going on and i'm teaching that to my children and um, mm. so um I've, I've done a couple of youtube videos one of them was about about the rat race but in short um, rat race versus an entrepreneurial journey so i've got a youtube video when when it's basically it's just in like kind of um i'm doing a bar chart so go on to screen bar chart show bar chart and they show you where your salary starts obviously when you're like 16 or whatever yeah and then yeah. going up going up so you, the, your salary just keeps going up as obviously you get promoted etc 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 and they've got another chart just slightly underneath it going up as well on, on the same on the same trajectory but it's just slightly underneath and that's your expenses and i'm explaining and this is what i've shown to the kids as well i'm explaining 
what happens when you get a, um, a pay rise, it goes on a holiday, a bag, a shoes, maybe a car, what happens when you get um, a bonus, same thing, what happens when you get a better job, better salary, you know, you go on a bigger holiday, you may get a bigger car, so all that happens, your expenses go up, and you know, the same job, J-O-B, just over broke, um, and that that's, I'm not saying that's what it is in the job, but some people do say that, um, but I'm just saying to people, to people, especially my children, because they're the ones that's most important to me, is don't fall in that trap because that's the trap that I fell in into. Where you know stuff when your money starts coming in, you start buying more stuff. So you're not the gap isn't changing yeah. on, on the fi- on on your financial wealth journey on your riches. And then showing them another graph as well the the, the the journey of an entrepreneur where your expenses are bloody high <laughs> because. <laughs> Of your seminars, which I which I used to love, your seminars, your travel, the courses that you're paying for, um, books that you're buying, the amount of books that I've that I bought is just uh, ridiculous over the last um, two years. Um, yeah, so when you're doing that, but then once you've and then the investments as well, but when the investments start coming through, so it could be property, it could be you know social media, or what I'm doing. Once people, you know, for my example, when they start buying your course. And it hits that curve, your finances just you know go right through the roof, but your, mm. your expenses pretty much stay level because you're not you don't need to buy anything else because that everything else the investment is coming back to you. So I'm teaching my children the rat race versus the entrepreneurial journey, yeah. uh, and just and I'm, I'm I'm that kind of dad where. I've not just taught it to them, I've made them draw the graph. And I've not just made them draw the graph, they've got the graph stuck on the wardrobe as well. So, <laughs> so like every day, yeah, so I'm not that kind of that because I just want them to do something better than what I've done. Yeah. And, you know, they're, they're doing their um, kind of um, affirmations in the morning just for, for mindset as well because I'm big on mindset. Mm-hmm. And I think especially um, for, for children as well I think they need to start them young uh, again Gil my daughter is now in year 8 um, and obviously to you know, and they've been obviously locked down here for a good months in the house and um, so I'll just get them to do the the morning manif- uh, sorry the, the morning um, uh, writing down um, their manifestation or their affirmations just, I should say just you know little things like I am worthy I'm happy I am loved you know, I'm in a, an environment that that loves me. You know, stuff like that to make him feel appreciated and appreciation. And um, so, I'll get him to do things like that as well. And I'm always teaching him stuff like that. My daughter was really, really mad. And this literally just happened last week. Um, I don't know if you've read the book or heard of the book, the, the Richest Man in Babylon. It's um, what well, yes, it's it's a great book about um, Babylonian times, about finances, wealth, and stuff like that. The way that we've we use uh, civilization about like 10,000 years ago in the banking system now and all the financial system. Um, long story short, anyway, I made the, I read it, so I let my daughter read it, and she hated it because it's kind of like in broken English, the way that it's, it's written. Uh, and she read it and was like, right, great, read it again. <laughs> so so I, made, I made her read the book again, and then um, and then she got really excited. She was like, "Oh, Dad, I finally finished book for the second time. Now, do you want the book back?" I was like, "No, that book's your Bible for now until I find you a different book." And wow. um, where my son's more analytical, um, he's he's very fucking, he's very good with numbers. He's only nine. He's going to be ten in November, so he's very good with numbers. So I've got this big book on stockbroker, like uh, I think it's called, I can't remember what it's called, but like Life of Stockbroker or something like that, so it's a really famous book. Um, I I didn't read, I only read half of it because I had more books that I was going to read, so I'll just give it to my sons to write, okay, read that book, so he just went, he went through a lot of that. Wow. Uh, so, so yeah, I just I just believe um, to help you educate your kids, don't get me wrong, the They've got all the Diary of Wimpy Kids and all that stuff, you know, the David Williams and all those books, are, you know, full to the top. But I think it's good as well to help them with kind of knowledge, knowledge so they've got yeah. wisdom. No, I, I, I completely agree. You know, I've always said, so my, my son's six, and I said that in an age-appropriate way, I've always talked to him not as a kid. Just so even, yeah. even today, he was asking, what do I do for a job? Which is yeah. like, wow, don't, don't, don't make me think too much about that. Otherwise, yeah. you've got to curl up in a corner but um yeah and, and it's and it's and, you know you say oh i kind of do websites and stuff and he's like well what, what do what do you mean and then you start you know talking it through and you know he's he's just getting into coding in a big way now um oh, which is 
Yeah, which is great, and and it's like, but at the same time, he he spends a lot of time playing, you know, Nintendo, and I think it's just that that balance, isn't it? I think if you can introduce yeah. them to this world that they are a part of, uh, whether yeah. we want them to be or not, but also yeah. let them be kids and just let them, you know, enjoy things. I think that's a really yeah. good blend, isn't it? It's it's the balance, and and it's so difficult. I don't think it's right or wrong, and um, the the balance that I try and do with my kids is when they get up to, to do the morning affirmations the, the, the book um the do the guitar lessons which when i say guitar lessons all, all i'm doing i'm trying to get fun so i've got a guitar so i'll just just go into youtube yeah. playing whatever tune as long as it's just strumming doing something a bit creative using the fingers using the mind rather than just watching a screen just to tap buttons to play your game yeah. so i'm just right do that right, okay so i'm going to play fortnite is fun yeah. fun I'm an attic not leaving something else in a minute <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So um, so yeah. So I'll just do that, and then then then, then let them do coloring as well, because it's great for the imagination, it's great for concentration. And and at, you know, like, this didn't just come to me. Stuff like I googled it, something for concentration, because I think that's something that my son struggles with. And mm. um, so rather than me shouting at him all the time and you know, blah blah stuff, like, let me go look to see what I can do for the concentration. And apparently, coloring is really good. Yeah. Um, so I've got um, some of these um, adult colouring books where it's got all these big patterns and stuff like that so they can just literally uh, colour so they're doing that and talk, going back to my son about phone I think fanatic so I've got them to, to create their own blog as well so the oh. bloggers yeah, so my son's blog is called Fortnite for Fanatics because he's obviously yeah. um, on so my, my daughter's um, it, She's always on TikTok, even though now it's so boring. You see, what she's like near enough teenager now. So yeah. one minute she loves TikTok, then she doesn't love TikTok. But anyway, she's got a blog um, called um, what's her blog? TikTok, TikTok fanatics or something like that. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. her blog. And um, so I, I get them to do that, and I've got them to monetize their blog as well. So wow. they get bits of yeah. So what 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 I, what I teach is you know it's, it can be for children as well, yeah. literally. How to create a blog, how to set up, how to monetize. Basically, it just means how to make money from your blog, and and that's what I teach. And you know, if, if people don't want to do it for themselves, what, what I'm showing them, you know, you can take a, a smaller class and you can just pass it over to your kids and say, you know, enjoy yourself. You can set up your blog properly. You set up your YouTube channel. You can get your YouTube channel to a certain amount, and then obviously once you've got your your followers on there, and it's monetized, which means again you can pay you. So it's just two sorts of income that you can get. But it's not it's not easy. It's not something that as soon as you set up YouTube, you only get these hundreds of followers. You need to work out. You need to put your posts down there. But that's what I can help men, you know help mentor and coach with. So that's yeah. what I do. I just try and serve whoever is interested. You know, it's plain and simple as that. That's amazing. That's really, really cool. And and I think that's a really good segue into if someone wants to find out more about you or, you know, wants to get in touch with you because they're either their own personal brand or, or their own company or whatever it is, how what is the best way for them to do that? Um, first of all, if you want to just check out some of the YouTube videos, the, the basic, uh, so just go onto YouTube and just type in Alan Terry. But if you want to get in contact with me, um, get me on Instagram. It's pro yeah. probably the best thing. Um, that's where all everyone seems to be hanging out now. Um, so just you know, find me on Instagram, which is Alan Terry, or my company name, which is Freetail Mindset. Um, and then obviously send me a, a direct message, and I'll be happy to get back in contact with you on there. But I'm hanging out on pretty much everything else. So obviously Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, YouTube, um, yeah, Twitter as well. But yeah, nice. if you want to have a conversation, do that. And I'm offering a free 30 minute um, coaching course as well. Call, That's sorry. Awesome. I'll put, and I'll put those links uh, on the right up of the podcast when that goes uh, live as well. And and you mentioned TikTok with your daughter. Are you on TikTok? Are you a TikTok fan? I am on TikTok. I'm not a TikTok fan, no. There's a lot of talk about TikTok at the moment um, in terms of who's going to purchase it. And I, yeah. Again, I did um, a... I did a YouTube video, again, just calling data war. You know, like when, when we had the Cold War yeah. and then we had the current war. I don't know if you've seen the film, The Current War. It's about Nikola Tesla, um, Edison, um, JP Morgan. It was electrification of America. Uh, okay. It's an amazing film. So it's, it's based on true events um, when America was obviously in the dark and then Nikola Tesla came in, Edison came in, Westinghouse came in to basically create, not create electricity, just control around us, harness electricity is a better word. So obviously put it into homes and businesses around the world, uh, around the US to, to begin with. Um, 
And I did a blog and I did a YouTube video about that, saying there's a current data war going on at the moment. So if anyone's in the in the know about data and what's going on with TikTok, you know, people try to find out who's going to buy TikTok. A lot of people are trying to um, badmouth TikTok, saying it's not safe to spy on you. Every company spies on us. Exactly. Every mobile company spies on us. Exactly. They're all the same. They all they all do it. Um, so the, the the next the last person who's trying to now buy TikTok is Larry Ellison, the CEO of Oracle, multi multi billionaire. Yeah. Um, so I heard it was Microsoft yeah. was the last that, that I heard. Right. Uh, Larry Ellison has just come into it now. So the reason why the reason why people think you know when like Facebook bought Instagram for billions of dollars, people think these are just weirdos on Instagram taking pictures of themselves half naked. Why the hell would you want to buy a company for billions? It's, it's not for the technology. It's not because it's a cool place to hang out. It's for the data. Yes. We put all our secrets on there. We put on there what we like, what we don't like, yeah. where we have to hang out. All our data goes somewhere. It goes onto their server. So they know everything about us. So that's what, what they're doing. So then what they do is they sell that, um, that data onto onto people who will obviously want to target that customer so yes. if you're into let's as like talk about cars so if, if you're into um let's say the the new bentley um flying spin that's just come out you talk about bentley that's all stolen data so what's yeah. going to happen if you've mentioned bentley enough times what's going to pop up on your screen yeah. a bentley commercial a bentley ad yeah. so people do need to understand now and that's same thing that's happening on, on TikTok as well because people yeah. are doing that. Um, so going back to your question, I've not forgot about your question. I'm on TikTok. Yes, I am on yeah. TikTok. Do I do dances? No, I don't do dances on TikTok. Right. Um, what what I do on TikTok is very simple, and I'm only just newly new to come onto it. Mine is me talking very fast, pretty much like this, but I purposely put onto speed two because you only got 60 seconds at the maximum TikTok, and it's me just giving some bits of factual advice you know, like, on like, one of them was like, um, why you need a, a list if you have, you know, if you if you're trying to set up a business and you've not got an email list or a customer list, you don't have a business. Mm -hmm. And it's just giving factual information about why you need to grow your list to do that. There's no point sending information to people out there on the internet. You need them to come back to you and sign in or opt into something, and then they're in your list, and you can sell the products or service to them as often or as little as you want to. Yeah, and I think um, it definitely a few weeks ago this was the case. I don't know if it still is now, but EduTalk is the largest trending hashtag on TikTok. You know, ed educational TikTok. Yeah, yeah is really yeah. so. It's you know, I'm I'm a, I'm a I'm quite a big TikTok fan. I'm not I'm not on the dances uh, either, but uh, yeah, it's it's funny because when I joined TikTok and it's all about you know dad life and careers and you know how to how to nail that corporate interview and people like who's yeah. going to want to see this, but um, people do. People do. Yeah, they did. They did. Yeah, even yeah. when I first, I didn't think anyone was going to check it out. But yeah, I'm starting to get more people coming onto really? it. But I, I hang out more on YouTube. That's that's more more my jam at the moment. Uh, and just sorry, just one more thing. The reason why YouTube is so great yeah. is because yeah. once you do a post on like TikTok, Instagram, you get your instant likes. You get you know it's it's up there to begin with, but then it kind of fizzles down. The great thing about when you post a video on YouTube, it's there forever. So you may only get ten views, twenty views 50 views a thousand views but it just literally keeps extrapolating yeah. month after month year after year and that's how many people do it so it's it's not a quick it's not a quick thing but it's more a steady and stable way to to grow okay. um, your business so do that check out youtube and also google own youtube youtube are the second largest search engine in the world yeah. google are the first largest uh, are the, are the first um, search engine in the world and google own youtube yeah. so it's it's just a no-brainer get into youtube absolutely no i love it um so my my last question and and you've kind of touched on this a little bit but i'm just interested is um if you were speaking to a new parent or someone about to be a parent what is the best piece of advice that that you would give them? Um, so they've never, never, never children before. They've just mm -hmm. been from, from a parent. Yeah, they're going, uh, oh my god, it's gonna happen. What do I yeah, do? yeah. Don't, don't, don't take life so serious. <laughs> don't, and and that's that's probably me talking about myself because I was yeah. a victim of it. Sort of too serious. I was, I was too much. You know, don't touch this, don't touch that. You know, if if you want who likes nice things and you're having a kid you know forget the nice things you're going to get paint on the wall you're going to get drawings 
in places. You you, you yeah. might not find it straight away. You might find it a month later. Yeah. You know, there's only there's only so much you can do. But the kids at the end of the day, yeah. and um, again, I follow um, Neil because I, I study um, not study. I'm, I read on astrophysics and stuff like that. Uh, again, this is another story we could talk about. So Neil deGrasse Tyson, and he talks about it very well. He's a, an astronomer, um, but he talks about it very well. He walked past a, a parent. And he saw, he saw a child was going to walk into a puddle and was actually splash into the puddle. Mm. And he saw the kid pull the child away not to splash into the puddle. And he was just explaining it in a very articulate way that I couldn't do. But he said that in itself, the kid to find to do that was a science, science experiment. Because mm. to jump into the puddle for the force of the feet to hit into the water and then the water to splash out either side, it's putting pressure. So it's just like, let them yeah. enjoy themselves. Let them yeah, enjoy yeah, themselves, yeah. you know. Yeah. The kids for a reason. Uh, absolutely I've, and i think a phrase that i've said more than i thought i would have since becoming a dad is don't worry we can paint over that yeah <laughs> yeah you really yeah. can yeah literally yeah. in the play with the dancers literally just um crayon all up the wall yeah all up the wall like she hid it hid in the playroom um and then she was like gone for like three four minutes yeah. and it's like bo where are you what went, went round, and yeah she was like on the wall i said what's on the wall on the wall so i just checked i was like right okay it's fine I'm paying over it. yeah exactly simple yeah simple exactly don't don't stress yourself out over it um, yeah. well Arn, look it's been an absolute pleasure to speak with you thank you so much for making the time no problem no problem thank you for having me on it's been a great gratitude and uh, yeah and please find me on whatever avenue you can do Arn terry or find me on freetimemindset.com absolutely thanks again